Welcome to hell, motherfuckers. It's your boy Jordan. And it's that great time of year, or not so great, depending on how you look at it, where you look back and see how the year has gone, uh, how you wish it would have gone, uh, how fast it has gone, while also looking forward to the fantasy playoffs, possibly, uh, the real NFL playoffs, depending on your team, possibly, uh, and more to come in the off season. We're already at that point where you can kind of reflect back on what's happened and look forward to what's to come, but also be upset that uh, it's already come so far so quickly because we are way past the halfway point, not only of our season, uh, but also the NFL season, including the NFL uh, full uh, season, and including the, the Super Bowl. I mean, we're more than halfway there. I mean, you realize that we are quite literally uh, December, January, beginning of February, we're about two months out from knowing who will be this year's Super Bowl champion, which means we are about one month out from knowing who that will be for our league. Uh, but there's a lot that goes into it. And like I said, there is a huge difference in what ESPN has versus what our league has in regards to some of the seedings. That is going to be dead last uh, because it is such a huge surprise to surprise me. I think you all deserve the same shock that I got. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Game of the week. Really fucking tired of being part of the game of the week in some way, shape, or form, or thinking that I might be. Uh, this one, Hector beat me, 163 to 159. It was a great game for everybody except me. Uh, so, uh, but... Again, good one, Hector. Love you to death, man. You've always been cool. Uh, but it wasn't cool what you did to me here, man. I mean, fuck, just, just whoop my ass. I'd rather you just whoop my ass and me be clinging uh, to a Monday night miracle here, which I did almost get. I don't know if anybody else uh, recognized this or not. but uh, And, of course, we're at 138 to 134 going into Monday night. Uh, he had Deontay Johnson and the Pittsburgh D, which got him a total of 25 points. I had Michael Pittman Jr. and Pat Fryermuth, who got a grand total of 25 points. So basically, it ended the same way that it started with a four point loss for me, four point victory for Hector. It essentially eliminates me from the playoffs. So, yes, it sucks, but it's fantasy. Um, enjoyed it, it was fun. I'll still be, of course, paying attention because there's a lot of things to root for and a lot of things going on for the loser bracket. I'm still going to be giving it my all, and I expect everybody to, no matter where you're at, uh, because it's fun. I mean, this is, to me, the reason why I got into fantasy, was to have another way to follow football, a different perspective, and it and I enjoy it. I mean, even, you know, yes, I want to win. Uh, I do not enjoy losing. I'm very competitive, uh, but I am at least at peace with the fact that you know, it's an actual fun process to go through, making trades and picking up players and trying to figure out the start sits and seeing who's going to, and then across leagues. I know a lot of us playing multiple leagues, you know, trying to root for your own, for a guy on your team who you're also playing against uh, is very difficult, but it's it's what we love, right? We, we love to hate it. We hate to love it, but this is what we're in. Um, so, I'll have to deal with the, uh, the the realities of that. I'm still in it in a couple other leagues, but this is my number one league and always will be, uh, which does make me uh, want to remind everybody, I believe I'm only waiting on an official word from a couple of you. If you all want in on the Dynasty League, I'm not going to take up much time here. Uh, but like I said, read up on it, think about it, get back with me. I'll be following up in another you know week or two just so I can start finalizing um, league setup and things like that. But let's get back to our league and what's important right now, uh, which is not just our game, which was the easy game of the week here, but next up is Manny and Joel. This is a big game. Manny took it 149 to 106. The difference here is Joel basically got outscored at every position except for one, which was wide receiver, and it wasn't by enough, uh, which is the reason why he has a 43-point loss. Moving on from there, Carlos gets 10 bucks. Man, his team looks good. Uh, 182 to Gus, 124. Gus said, or I'm sorry, Carlos said, I see that difficult schedule by far that, that, that you said that I have, and I said, fuck you anyway. Uh, the difference here, I mean, it's Josh Jacobs. It's literally, jo it's Josh Jacobs, holy shit. You can see it right there, okay? That's all there is, holy shit. 
57 fucking points, man. Josh Jacobs was supposed to be an average running back at best. And I would not have expected Josh McDaniels to go over there and end up with a running back that is going to be leading the league in something. I thought it was going to be purely uh, a passing game show at the very least. I know that he's always incorporated backs, but it's normally by committee. Uh, but apparently that's Bill's uh, decision, not his. He has been giving it to Josh Jacobs like a motherfucker. And it has paid off uh, in some respects, at least when he goes off like he did. Over 300 all-purpose yards, I read that. Uh, in the Super Bowl era, he is the only third player to have two touchdowns and over 300 all-purpose yards. Uh, the other two are Adrian Peterson and Priest Holmes. That's some decent company to be in when you remember the years they had back in 07, and in, I think it was 04 for Priest Holmes, 03 or 04. Moving on from there, Sam further cements his status as a league leader here, 159 to 114. Uh, the difference here was at wide receiver. Uh, it was an outscore of 50 to 14, which is basically the game. It was 159 to 114. The difference was 50 to 14 just at the wide receiver position. That makes up almost the entire difference there. Uh, and that was because of Justin Jefferson and Stephon Diggs. Um, I mean, when you look at it and everybody was thinking that Sam was just in the clear with Cup and JJ and Diggs, uh, yeah, that would have been nice, but when you look at what happened to Cup, he needed that, and kudos to him for making moves to ensure that he not only uh, continues to dominate, um, but even if somebody gets hurt, he has somebody else to plug in. Trust me, <laughs> I wish I could have said the same thing about my fucking self, uh, but can't, and can't undo the past, so therefore, Sam wins, Jeff loses, and we're on to the next game. Saeed. 145 over Alex, 125 and a half. Difference here really was JT. This could have been a quote game of the week because um, you never know what could happen. Last week I needed you know points from Rondale Moore uh, and he, uh, he got injured after getting negative yards and basically secured that. That is exactly what Alex would have needed here. Um, but he doesn't get it just like I didn't get it, unfortunately, but I'm not bitter. Um, anyway, uh, he loses by 19 and a half points due to JT looking like JT finally, uh, even in that losing effort on Monday night. Last but not least, Lewis. Congrats, buddy. I'm glad that you got a second win. Uh, Kyle, I know it's rough, man. It's been a rough year for both of us. Uh, we both have the same exact record now. Uh, but Lewis gets his second win and, of course, now has me worrying if I'm going to be able to pull it off against him next week because you never know if he's catching fire at the right time. Um, and, you know, it, it, was, it was a very convincing win. It was more that Kyle lost it, scoring the least amount of points in the league this week, uh, which does suck. And, but, you know, at the same time, Lewis has had a hard time scoring 96 points in the past, too. So that wasn't a guarantee that if Kyle scored 96, that Lewis was automatically going to win. So uh, I was very impressed by that. I'm glad to see that Lewis got a convincing win and didn't just need, um, you know, a tie and some bench points in order to eke one out. Um, but uh, basically the difference here was that Lewis had only two players in single digits and Kyle only had three players in double digits, and it wasn't by much. So... That's how you get a 43, or I'm sorry, a uh, more than a 43, 47 point game. All right, so like I said, I'm leaving the surprise for last. So what I'm going to go down is I'm going to go down the current seedings as per ESPN, and I'm going to go over some of the possibilities that everybody has. So um, I am going to talk to some things that are not uh, officially legit, where there is a possibility that something could happen, but it is extremely unlikely. Uh, and then once we get through all of that, I'm going to drop a bomb on you motherfuckers uh, with something that totally upends the current standings as they are and might change perspectives on how you're playing going forward and how much risk you're willing to take because you might need to risk more than you thought or you might not need to depending on who you are. Um, so first up, Sam, I can give you a spoiler alert this uh, announcement has nothing to do with Sam or Saheed. Uh, they are by far and away, at least right now, uh, the one and two seed. Um, there is a one game difference with Gus between Sam and him. Um, and that is why Sam can at best be number one seed like he is now. At worst, he could be the fifth seed because he could still lose the division to Gus. Um, he would win the tiebreaker over Gus with points. He has a good enough lead where that should hold. He holds the tiebreaker with Manny for head-to-head. -head. 
Um, so nobody else can tie or beat his record, but if he ends up tied with Gus, he would most likely, unless there's a huge outscoring, he would get the number or the, the win in the division and likely that one seed. Um, but he could win the division and still get a two seed as well. Um, I do not believe it is possible for him to get a three or a four. So it's one, two, or five. All right. Second is Sahid. Like I said, best he can do is first. Worst he can do is second. Uh, nobody can catch him. So he doesn't have anybody in his division that can catch him. He's already won that. Nobody else uh, can basically catch him in any sort of way um, as a division leader to boot him out of second or first. So congrats, Sahid. Uh, you actually should feel the most comfortable, at least right now, uh, because nothing can really change too much for you. Either hopefully something happens and you move up because you do need to finish a game ahead um, of Sam in order to get that one seed. Um, and also the same with Gus. So at worst, you're second. At best, you're first. You have the smallest margin of outcomes there. All right. Next up. Third seed has Alex at six and six. The best he can do is third. The worst he can do is fourth. Now, this is where we get into some of those asterisks, okay? Um, the asterisk being that he technically has not locked up the division because technically speaking, if he lost out and me and or Kyle won out, then uh, we could tie him at six and eight, which would be the ugliest fucking division you could ever imagine. Um, but it would be exciting, but it still wouldn't be much of a chance because he has a two, he has over a 250 point lead over the second place person for points in our division. So not only would he have to lose both games, which would be to, uh, let's see, um, Hector and Gus, you'd have to lose both games and me and Kyle would have to win both of our games and one of us would have to outscore him by at least over 250 points. I don't think anybody scored 250 this year or come close. I don't think we've actually gotten that. We've gotten the 200s, but not close to 250. So it's not going to happen. It's virtually impossible. So he is pretty much a lock for third or fourth seed. He is pretty much a lock for the division. It just is not officially legit yet because there is an outside chance uh, that, I don't know, he gets negative points and me or Kyle's team just goes completely off the fucking rails in a positive way. Uh, but let's be real, not going to happen. Fifth or uh, fourth seed next up has Joel as the division leader among him and Jeff and Carlos. They are all six and six. At best, he can do is three. The worst that he can do is out of the picture. Like I said, I'm giving you all of this information and it is all true but the seedings are going to be changing here from what I'm giving you. And it, it's going to be something that involves this division. I can tell you that right now. Okay. Fifth seed, Gus at eight and four. Best he can do is first. He can get that first seed. Worst he can do is technically he could be out um, of the playoffs. The only way for that to happen would be if Jeff won the division, his division with Jeff, Joel, and Carlos, if he won that division, then he would have the tiebreaker over Carlos and, uh, and Joel based on points because of how they would end up tying out with their head-to-heads potentially here. Um, he still has to play Joel, so he would have to still win that game. Um, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, he would have to lose that game, I'm sorry, um, in order to possibly be out if that were to happen. Um, so it's very, very unlikely just because of how that division is kind of shaping up and what would have to happen. He is most likely in the playoffs, but there is a possibility that he could, uh, you know, lose and, and be out of the playoffs as well, but it's just not likely to happen here. It's a one specific scenario type of thing. He does have tiebreaker over Sahid and Jeff. That is what's important there. Um, so, but it, the, the reason why it would matter though about Jeff winning the division for him to possibly be out is because they would all have tied records and competing head to heads, um, which it then goes to points. And then there is potential that, that basically at that point, he would essentially be out there. All right. Cause he would be going against, uh, Joel and Carlos in regards to those points. And they both, I believe, lead him at this, at this moment. Manny is six seed. At least right now, it's seven and five. I believe that actually is correct. 
Uh, the best that he can do is fifth. The worst he can do is out. Um, he split with Gus. Sam swept him. Um, and that's basically where he's at. He cannot win the division. Um, but he does have a chance to absolutely uh, be able to make a run here and get into and get in without having to be a, uh, a bottom seed. He's, he's most likely going to have a five point deficit. That's almost guaranteed. But otherwise, that he pretty much is a lock. Seventh right now has Jeff. Best he can do is third. Worst he can do is out. Pretty simple right there. Carlos, best he can do is third. Worst he can do is out. All of his division mates are pretty much the same. That they could be third, they could be out, they could be any one of the other uh, other uh, wild card seeds as well. So it is possible for all of them to get in. It is possible for just one of them to get in. Um, it's most likely that two, possibly three, get in, but we'll have to see how that shakes out. And Carlos right now, like I said, is the first team out, according to ESPN. Jeff is the last team in. Ninth, Hector. Best he can do is seventh, the last wild card. He has to win out. Um, he does need to. Um, he has a tiebreaker over me and Joel. So I believe he would basically end up having to be in a situation where he ties Joel and then he would get seventh seed, Joel gets eighth. So there's a couple of specific things. Um, he does have a steep road ahead of him. All right. Lastly, myself, Kyle, and Lewis, we have zero chance. Now, like I had said, this is the one that comes with the asterisk. Technically, me or Kyle have an extremely small chance that we could win out uh, Alex loses out, and then we outscore him by over 250 points in the last two weeks. It's not going to fucking happen, okay? So let's just get that out of our heads. All realistic purposes, me, Kyle, and Lewis are making plans for the loser bracket, period. All right? So what is the big surprise here? Well, the seeds are not what they seem, and they change drastically. If you remember, we originally had... One Sam, two Sahid, three Alex, four Joel, five Gus, six Manny, seven Jeff. Carlos is out. That is completely incorrect. The correct order is as follows Sam first, Sahid second. That is understood. Third seed is Carlos. That is correct. Third seed is Carlos. The reason being is he has the tiebreaker when it goes to points, and he has a pretty comfortable tiebreaker. If he stays tied, at least right now, he has a 126-point lead over Joel and a 44.5-point lead over Jeff. The reason why this happens is because he split with Joel, and he was swept by Jeff, but when it comes to uh, Jeff and Joel, uh, Joel swept Jeff. Okay, so there's competing tiebreakers there. So it goes to points. And right now, Carlos has a fairly comfortable lead. Now he could get outscored fairly easily by Jeff, not so easily by Joel. So Carlos's third seed over Alex even, because he also holds the tiebreaker over Alex. In fact, Carlos holds a lot of important tiebreakers. Watch out for his fucking team because he holds tiebreakers over me, which is part of the reason why I have no shot of getting in as a seventh seed, even if I went out and he loses out. But he has it over me, Alex, Gus, Manny, Hector, and he still has to play Sam. He lost to Sahid earlier, but he plays Sahid again in the last week. Now, Sahid is over him in points by 71, so even if they tie in, in the record or get close there, it wouldn't, it, when it goes to points, if, if Basically, if they split and it goes to points, then Sahid would likely win that, but there's still an outside chance. But that is a huge change because the first two are the same, but Carlos goes from being out of the playoffs per ESPN to the third fucking seed, which would be playing Manny. Okay, and he actually holds the tiebreaker over Manny. He's beat him once already. Alex is now fourth seed. He would be playing Gus. Okay, that would be a huge fucking game. And as far as, let me see, he has a tiebreaker over Gus, but he also uh, plays him again. So we're gonna, we might get a, a third repeat performance, or they might actually play in the last week of the year and then play again the very next week 
in the playoffs as a wild card, at least as it stands now. That's how it would shake out if the results hold. After that, Gus is still the fifth seed. Manny is the sixth. Jeff gets the seventh and last seed. Joel, who was listed as the fourth seed in a division winner, is actually the first team out of the playoffs right now. Another huge issue here, Hector being ninth seed. Joel and Hector play in the last week of the regular season this year. They could be playing for the possible last playoff spot, depending on what happens over these next couple of weeks. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't remember ever a time where I came to you all with a playoff picture two weeks out and had ESPN having somebody completely out of the picture who really should be the third highest seed and then completely getting that division winner out of the playoffs and then has a huge game versus somebody who has must-win games just to have a shot at the seventh seed. So, Joel, you can't be comfortable, brother. You're out of the playoffs right now. You got to win. And you also got to win convincingly, too, because you also are down when it comes to points. Jeff, same for him. Now, not that anybody's trying to lose and not that you can will your team to go, but you're going to be looking a lot more closely at how many points your team scores as well. That's important here. Carlos has the edge. He's been scoring like fucking crazy lately. All right? So... It's going to be very important to pay attention to not only how your team is doing in the win-loss column, if you're winning your game, but how are they doing in scoring and scoring versus your division mates, because that's going to be the difference between getting a five-point cushion going into Wild Card Weekend, because none of you all can get the first seed and get a bye, or going in with a five-point deficit. Uh, so a lot is is here to unpack, and this is what makes it a lot of fun and even more engaging for me even though I'm out of the playoffs to see how this all will shake out while not having to be too worried about it even though hopefully I get to play spoiler a little bit but we'll see what happens but hope that was as big of a surprise to you all as it was to me hope you all are doing well you and your families um, enjoy the next two weeks and good luck to everybody who has something to play for and we'll see what happens with the loser bracket keep in mind the lowest two seeds which will be Lewis it definitely will be Lewis uh, and then either myself or Kyle, most likely, I think Hector has an outside shot as well, but uh, we'll be playing against Lewis for the uh, title of the worst team, basically, and the punishment that goes with it. So Lewis is not a lock for that just yet. Hope everything uh, goes well for those that are, have someone to play for. Uh, but let's see how this shakes out, because this time next week, it could be a completely different conversation into where the seeds are. All right. Peace out, bitches.